You're going to want to know what the winning experience is all about, and I'm going to tell you.
time. Winning, losing, winning, losing, winning, losing. Okay, you guys all with me? Okay, now, we, in today's day and age, we have this thing kind of in the middle of winning and losing, and we call it, uh, you know, the uh, participation trophy, right? We got this participation trophy. I see some people shaking their heads. But we got this participation trophy that supposedly, from what I understand, has been the detriment of the entire world, right? The entire next generation of millennials, everyone in this room that's under 34 years old, you guys have all been completely ruined and destroyed by the participation trophy, right? The world is coming to an end, is what they say. I disagree a little bit, okay? I think the millennials are stinking awesome. That's what I think. That's why I've hired most of you guys, okay? But as far as the participation trophy itself, I kind of agree with my boy uh, Harrison, who's a Steelers fan in here. All right, a couple Steelers fans. Not me, but just make sure you raise your hand. So, Mr. Harrison says, I'm not about to raise two boys to be men by making them believe that they are entitled to something just because they tried their best. Okay? Can some of you guys agree with this statement? Okay? Has anybody ever told you, just try your best? Just do the best you can, you'll get there. Has anybody ever told you that? Okay, it's a lie. It's an outright lie. Okay? Just trying our individual best is not going to get us to where we want to go. Never will. You gotta win. You gotta you gotta you gotta figure out what my best is. I'm gonna try my best right here, and then you gotta push yourself further. You gotta challenge yourself more, you gotta grow, you gotta push yourself beyond that level. If you just try your best around here and you sell 15 cars, you know, a month or, or I'm sorry, 15 cars a month would be all right. If you just try your best around here and sell like 10 cars a month, you're going to go broke, right? It's not going to work. So you can be like, I tried my best, but then you don't have a check to cash. Does that make sense? It doesn't work, okay? So participation trophies, trying your best. Yeah, I get it. I get this old adage right here. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. It's how you play the game. And I tell my kids this sometimes. You know, Joel's five. He plays t-ball. Doesn't matter if they win or lose the game. It really does. I just want them to go out there, swing the bat, and like try to run towards that. Like the base is over there. Go that way. All right. He's learning. It's instructional. So whether or not they win or lose, no big deal. But when they win, it's stinking awesome. Right? We chant, we cheer, we have a great time. He feels good. He gets this winning attitude. Same with Savannah. I tell her, you know, <coughs> as long as you're having fun, like with golf, she's out there and she's competing, and as long as she's having fun cool with it. She doesn't have to win. It's better when she wins, right? Because she feels good. She starts to get the winning attitude. She gets a little jacked up. She gets reassurance. She gets a reward for all of her action. So yes, at this age, it doesn't really matter if you win or lose, say you play the game. At this age, as long as you're having fun, everything's okay. Okay? But like, like I said, but if you lose, there's just no trophy. Okay? In my house, you can play your best. You can try your hardest. You can have a good game, but if you lose, you're not getting a trophy. Not in my house. Okay, that's just not how it works. I don't believe that you should be <coughs> rewarded for, for not winning. I just don't believe in that. You have to win. Winning matters. Winning is important. Winning is what we all are striving for. Okay? We're not five years old playing t-ball in here. We're not seven years old playing golf. <coughs> all right? We're all big boys and girls now. A lot of my beautiful big boys and girls right here. Okay, we're all big boys and girls now, and winning at this point in your life matters. Let me show you the difference between winning and losing. Okay, this is why it matters. It's two different pieces of paper that we can hold up, two different signs. Can you guys read that check on the right? It's nasty. $132,994. Anybody want a paycheck that looks like that? Okay, that's what winning looks like. Look at the sign on the other side. Is this the unemployment line? That's basically the level that you're at now. When you were playing t-ball, when you were in middle school, it wasn't like that. This is where we're at right now, okay? If you're not winning, you're losing. If you're not winning, you might be holding this sign. We don't want to hold this sign. We want to hold this, okay? So when you go into every single deal with your customer and every single interaction, with your customer, there has to be a result at the end. The result is either you won or you lost. That's the result. Either your customer won or they lost. 
That's the result. There is no participation trophy. There is no, well, the customer really likes me as they're leaving in their car they showed up in. There is no, well, they said they'll send their friends when they don't buy. There is no, well, they said they'll come back in the fall when they're ready to buy a car. Uh -uh. You don't get a trophy for that. You don't get a check for that. You don't get a reward for that. You have to win. You have to go into every single interaction with the idea that I'm going to win and my customer's going to win. Otherwise, we lose. All right, now, here at Dan Cummins, we know what winning looks and feels like. Okay? That's the plaque I keep in my office. I look at it every single day because i got to remind myself that here at Dan Cummins Chevrolet, what we do is we win. That's what we do. It's what we've done for the last six years. January 2011, I've got 131 cars out for the month. Okay? Now we're selling 863 on our way to 900 or 1,000 a month. 600% increase in sales over the last six and a half years. We have 268 employees. You know how many we have right here? 43. 268 employees. If you go in Josh's office, if you get a chance, his wall is lined up with trophies and plaques from General Motors. 200 Club, 200 Club, 250 Club, 250 Club. We're getting ready to be 300 Club, right? We're getting ready to be 300 Club. He's got plaques. Chevy Dealer of the Year Award last year. Okay? We know that's what we do here. We win here at Dan Cummins. We win. Every single day, every single interaction, we win. We get that. We understand that. My question is, do our customers feel the same way we do? Are our customers winning in every experience they have with this dealership? Because the Chinese will tell you, there's yin and yang, okay? If I'm winning all the time and my customer's losing, all the time, no balance, no bueno, okay? Your customer's got to win too. That's what a lot of businesses miss. That's the, the, the key ingredient that we have here at Dan Cummins that a lot of other places don't have. A lot of people are in it for themselves and they don't understand that the customers have to win in every single interaction as well. Not just on the sales floor, not just when they first get here, but months down the road and years down the road, every time they interact with this dealership. You gotta win every single time okay so it is our responsibility like I just said on the sales side as well as on the service side to make sure our customers are winning they have to be winning by our responsibility I mean Troy it's your responsibility this way it's your responsibility Tom, it's your responsibility. Sip, it's your responsibility. Not just on the sales side, on the service side. Is it Tim Hollyfield's responsibility? Yes, he has his own bubble that he lives in. But if it's your customer and you sold him a car, it's your responsibility to make sure they win. If you set up a due bill with them and they got to come back and get work done, it's your responsibility to make sure that happens, to make sure that it's smooth, to make sure that you follow through with it. You gotta take care of them. Every time they walk into the dealership, we have to take care of them. Otherwise, here's what happens. I was talking to, I think it was Tom, or I was talking to somebody, and we were, we were talking about the shape of a pyramid, man. If you've got three walls of your pyramid are solid, but one wall is not, you're screwed. We can, we can sell 20,000 cars a year, but if we can't take care of the customer after the sale, it will be short-lived. We will stop winning. We'll stop. Everybody can get excited and be like, oh, yeah, Dan Cummins, they sell a lot of cars. But when you start reading reviews that say, yeah, they'll sell you a car, but after that, good luck. That's when we start going back down the other way. Does anybody want to go back down the other way? I don't. I don't want to go back to 43 salespeople and 131 cars a month. I'm not interested. I'm a winner. I like to win. If I'm going to put in my 60 hours a week, if I'm going to be here every day, if I'm going to be out here in the heat, if I'm going to be out here in the snow, if I'm going to be away from my family and make these sacrifices, I'm going to win. And if I wasn't on video, I'd say, dang it, but I don't say that word. Okay, but I'm going to win. And we're going to win, and our customers have to continue to win long after the sale. Okay, so how do we do this? How do we make sure every single customer that walks in the door wins? 
Okay, there's a couple steps. It's really simple. Step one, we greet them enthusiastically and call them by name. But what if I don't know their name? Ask them! It's easy. Greet them enthusiastically and call them by name. When they walk through the door, this is my man, Toby Bryant, right? He's walking in the tunnel. Look at all the people. Do you think they're shouting his name? Kobe, Kobe, look at me, look at me. Ah! They want to high five him, right? That's enthusiasm. When we've got customers walking through this showroom and we're like head down, clicky clack on our computer, oh, don't make eye contact, how do you think that makes them feel? Like they're winning or they're losing? Pick one. Losing, thank you. Anybody else? Make them feel like they're winning or losing? Losing, right? Are we a winning dealership or a losing dealership? Winning, okay. So if our customers are feeling like they're losing, then we're not going to be winning, right? It doesn't work. Opposites. We talked about it. Yin and yang, right? All right, so when I see customers going through the showroom, or I see customers sitting in those, in their, uh, in those seats over there by service, right? We've got the seats that are kind of out in the showroom now. Or we see customers sitting in the service area waiting for the oil changes. What do we need to be doing? We need to greet them enthusiastically and call them by name. <coughs> it's easy, right? Every time. Now, is just one person greeting Kobe Bryant, or is everybody greeting Kobe Bryant? Everybody, right? Or, or is this guy right here going, or is that, that girl right there going, well, you know what? Somebody else is going to talk to him. It's cool. Someone else will, 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 will say hi to Kobe. They'll high five him. I don't need to. Is that what they're doing? Is that what we're doing downstairs sometimes? Maybe sometimes. Okay? If I'm a customer and I walk in and you say hi to me and ask me my name and you say hi to me and ask me my name and you say hi to me and ask and you say hi to me and you say hi to me and you say hi to me and everybody in the place keeps saying hi to me and asking me my name, I'm going to feel like I'm winning, like I'm special, like I'm important, like I'm the only one. Right? Can we do that? Can we do that together as a team? Can we just say hi to people? Greet them enthusiastically and call them by name? I believe we can. It'll make them feel good. So that's step one. Okay? Step two, we have to coach them through every single step of the process. My man, Derek Carr, massive contract, right? He's a winner. Okay, we got to coach them through every single step of the process before and after the sale. I can't hit on this enough. Before and after the sale. Okay, so I greet them enthusiastically. I call them by name. Now I'm going to pull them in, right? And I'm going to coach them, and they're going to have an idea. They're going to be like, well, I think I should throw the ball over here, or maybe I should hand it off. And you're like, no, no, no. Hold on, man. Hold on. I'm your coach. I'm here for you. I want to make sure you win. Okay, let me show you what we should do. We need to be looking at this car. We need to be doing this. We need to structure it this way. We need to set it up. You have to be the coach. you got to instruct them every step of the way. Then you got to let them know what's going to happen next. Okay, you can't just be like, okay, wait, here. You know, you got to be like, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to talk to this person. I'm going to get this, and I'm going to get this information. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do this, and then when, when that's done, we're going to go here. We're going to go through this step. We're going to go here. We're going to go here. We're going to go here. I'm going to take you over to finance, and then you're going to get into the finance office. You're going to meet a great person. They're going to be awesome. They're going to take good care of you. Then when you come back, we're going to set up an appointment. We're going to do that together. I'm going to go over your OnStar. I'm going to show you everything that I need to show you on your car. Okay, and then when you come in, I want you to call me first because we've got the appointment on the due bill, and I want to make sure you get taken care of properly. So we'll set that up, and I'm going to meet you. I'm going to meet you in the service lane. You're going to wait right there. Don't talk to anybody until you talk to me. They might say hi to you and ask you for your name. Other than that, don't talk to anybody. Wait for me. I'm going to meet you in the service department, and I'm going to walk you through the steps. I'm going to take you to the service rider. I'm going to make sure your parts get ordered. I'm going to make sure you have a cup of coffee, and I'm going to get you in and out in a, in a period of time that's, that's, uh, that fits what you need. That's walking them through the steps. Then when you get them back in their car, you send them out of here, and you say, hey, here's what I need you to do, okay? I need you to tell all your friends and family that I'm the, I'm the best in the world. This is the best dealership ever, and you got the best service on the planet. Okay, that's the next step. Then you call them a week later, and you call them a month later, and the next time you see them in the oil changes, do the same thing. You're constantly coaching them. Okay? We gotta walk them through every single step of the process. Long after the sale. Okay? Long after the sale. Alright, then, of course, you know, we gotta put the spotlight on them. We give them over the top support. Alright? Well, we're already, when we're cheering for our customers uh, in the showroom, oh, they're talking. When we're cheering for our customers in the showroom, it's, it's, you know, we've heard it so many times and we got to get used to it. And so here's where we're at now. That's where we're at now. Maybe a whoo! That's kind of where we're at now. Even me, sometimes in my office, I used to like jump up and cheer. Now I'm sitting at my desk like whoo! Right? We got to get that back up. 
we got to ramp that level back up. We have to cheer for every single customer because they need to feel like they're doing what? Winning. Like they're winning, right? So we got to cheer for them. We got to ramp it up. We got to be over the top. We got to paint our faces blue. And we got to put UK on our chest just like we would for a basketball game. For every single customer, and we got to cheer for them and make them feel like they're winning. Don't really paint your face. Okay? <laughs> not, not, not for work. Okay? All right? We got to cheer for them. All right, now, when we do all this, who's the hero? Hmm? Customer. Customer. Okay? A lot of people miss this point right here. A lot of people think that since we're the ones doing the enthusiastic cheering and we're the ones that are coaching them through the whole process and we're the ones that's giving them over the top support, they think that we're the hero in this whole process and we are not. Okay? We're not the hero. We're just the fan. We're the fan, we're the coach, we're the guy on the sidelines. Okay, they're the hero, and they have to feel that way in order for them to have a winning experience. Okay, you guys got the three steps? Greet them enthusiastically and call them by name. All right, we got to make sure we do that. And then what do we do next? We coach them through every step of the process, right? Sales and service. service. Okay. All right. And then we make sure that they're the hero, like my boy Jeff Morris, right? Okay. Now, uh, here at Dan Cup and Chevrolet, we're going to make sure these customers get a winning experience every single time. And just to reiterate exactly what that feels like, we're going to watch this awesome stinking video.
We've made some changes. We've kind of worked our way through it. Our inventory went from having 230 cars online as far as Monday. We now have 430 cars online. And this weekend, these guys are going to be cranking out all weekend, turning wrenches, making sure these cars are ready for our customers. So we'll have even more online on Monday. Part of the problem is as we went through that system, there were some vehicles that did not get photoed. So they're online ready for sale. Like we've got them online on our side, but there's no photos of them, so they're not showing up in any searches, okay? And they don't show up in Auto Trader or they won't show up anywhere without a photo. So I need you guys' help this morning. What we're gonna do, all of your management team is gonna be right out here on the outside of the building. We're gonna have our phones. Basically, we've gotta get pictures taken, okay? So what I need you guys to do, that was so what we've got to do is as an army we have to go out and grab these vehicles I'm assuming with the amount of people in here we're probably gonna to have to do two to three a piece okay Pretty much if we all chip in so what we're gonna do I'll hand out keys before we leave here I just need you to go out grab the vehicle drive it right up here on the side okay just drive it right up here hop out me or Sam or Zach or somebody's gonna take five quick pictures of it and then just go put it back where you got it Grab another one. That's all I need you to do. Okay? We'll get out on the lot. We'll get rolling. While you guys are doing that, I'll have Clough run over and get us some breakfast in case the people are hungry. So I'll get some breakfast. So as soon as we're done moving all these cars, we'll have some fuel. We've got the lot ready. We've got cars online. We're ready for you guys to win because we got 82 appointments. We're going to make sure our customers get winning experiences. And we're going to have a kick ass, kick butt Saturday. All right? Yeah. All right, cool. Let's go. Thanks for tuning in, guys.